Hello and welcome to this video on Git version. In the previous videos, we've talked about dependency hell and using semantic versioning to resolve dependency issues. In this video, we're going to look at a practical implementation of that by leveraging Git version, an open source tool, to create automatic Git versioning based on the status of our Git branches. Let's get right into the demo. I have a Git repository called partsunlimited.auth2. I've also created a local working copy of that repository. First up, you would have to install Git version locally on your machine. I've already done that. You could use the Choco install uh, command line on PowerShell uh, in an elevated mode to complete the installation. Um, later on, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the Git version task that's available in the Visual Studio Marketplace that you can plug in into your pipelines. But for now, uh, let's get back into the command line and against this git repository, run the git version command. You can see that it tells me uh, certain things within the result set. Uh, it's indicating that it considers the code base to have a minor version number, and that's probably because we haven't yet configured git version against this repository. So let's start off by configuring git version against this git repository. OK, let's start off by initializing it. It gives us a wizard where we have the options of um, going through a Q&A, a series of questions and answers to help determine what Git version strategy would work best for our branching model. Right off, you're given two options to use Git flow or GitHub flow. But if you're not sure about which, work would, which one would work better for you, it's best to select option three, which will take you through the series of questions. Do you need to maintain multiple versions of your application simultaneously in production? For us, nope. Do you stabilize releases while continuing to work on the next version? Yeah, I, I think it kind of makes sense. You know, you cut out a release branch, then if there is any bugs that are identified as part of the release testing, then you'd go in and fix them. So yeah, we do stabilize our releases in the release branch. It's already telling us that Based on the answers we've provided, it looks like Git flow is a likely good fit for the semantic versioning uh, using Git version. Now we're given the option to follow the semantic versioning using this branching model and increment the semantic versioning based on the tagging done on the branches. Let's save and exit. OK, well, this in turn would have created a YAML file, which has the Git configuration that we've defined for this repository. Let's add this file to the repository and push the changes up on the server. Now, if we come back to the, the repository on the server and we refresh it, we can see that the Git version file has been added here. What I'm going to do at this point is go in into the tag section and tag this version of the branch as version 1.0 of the application. With that tag created, you know, we've kind of established that we've gone live with the master branch into production. Now we're going to do some parallel development. Therefore, it makes sense to cut a new branch from master. And let's call that branch develop. Now that we have a developed branch, and we can go into the branch and make some changes. But before I do that, I want to quickly show you the Git version build task that's available to you. The Git version build task available in Visual Studio Marketplace provides the same capabilities of Git version that we've been looking at right into the pipeline. So at the point of uh, doing the compile uh, or the get sources from within the pipeline, it assesses the tag of the branch and works out the deltas of the commits against the branches to figure out a new Git version number. Uh, we'll see that in action now. 
I've created a new pipeline called partsunlimited.auth2. Let me edit the pipeline and show you what it looks like. It's a very basic pipeline, which is using the git version task. The git version task will look at the git version YAML file that exists in the repository. And as you've seen in the configuration there, we've specified that we're interested in using the git flow based on the tagging to work out the semantic versioning. So without adding any other tasks to this pipeline, just to keep it simple, I will go ahead and trigger a new, new build in this pipeline just to show you the initial version that it calculates. Now we're going to run this against the master branch. Now as you can see that it changes the version of the build from the number that it showed before to 1.0.0. And it's doing that by picking up the tag that we've associated with the master branch, telling us that the version uh, should just be 1.0.0. Now, if I trigger the build again, traditionally, if we weren't using the git version task, the version number of the build would have changed. But because we're using git version, it's able to look at the tag and then work out that no further commits have been done to the branch. Therefore, the version number of the build should just remain the same. So let's go ahead and make some changes. I'll go into the develop branch and just mimic making a change to a code file. Uh, let's pick a model or a controller, go into the home controller. Let's save those changes. Now, as I commit these changes into the develop branch, This would have triggered a build pipeline. Now you can see that the build number has been changed from the number that it showed before when the build was triggered to a version number of 1.1.0. This is highlighting that the develop branch is one change ahead of the master branch, and therefore, it's tagged as 1.1.0. But because we're still developing, and we haven't yet finished the development in that branch, it appends the tag alpha at the end of it. Now, this is fantastic, because if you deploy this in a test environment, right away looking at the version number, you know this change isn't yet ready to be shipped live. Let's carry on building on this further, and assume that all the work that we were doing on the develop branch is completed. Therefore, we will work our way forward from the develop branch and create a new branch called release. As I create the release branch, a new build pipeline, the build pipeline would have triggered a new build. Let's go and have a look at it. We can see that a new build's been triggered. Now, as you can see here, the build numbers changed from what it was before to the version number 1.1.0 release plus one, indicating that this release branch has one set of changes that have come in from the develop branch. Um, and, and this is basically highlighting that it's not alpha quality anymore. It's more being prepped up for the next release. Now, we can go back in into the tags and create a new tag for our release branch to highlight that you know we're kind of ready to release. Now, if we go back in and trigger a release for our release branch, let's drill into this. And 
As you can see with the build completed, the build number hasn't changed from the previous build, indicating that the no further new changes have been added to the build. <clears throat> what we're going to do now is go back to the code, merge the changes from the release branch into the master branch, and then tag them again. And as you can see, the merge is now complete. So if we go back to the tag section and create a new tag called release 1.1.0 on master, So coming into the screen now, you can see that the, uh, the build's queued here and it's running. Let's drill into this build. All right, let's uh, drill into the Git version step in the build pipeline here. If we scroll down, we can see that it has identified that two commits have happened um, since, and therefore it uses that as the base to calculate the new version. As we can see in the final update here, that it's changed the build version from 2843 into 1.0.1 1 .1 plus 2. So Git version did what we expected it to do. Uh, a heavily configurable tool, as we've seen in the demo here, um, allows you to create a config file. You can base the config file to work on a, a branching model that is of type GitHub or GitHub Flow. Also allows you to configure whether the versioning should be based on the tags, giving you more control, or be based on the comments that you can add directly into your commits. Now, I would highly encourage you to go and try Git version. After all, why should you want to manually version your code when there is an open source extension available to just do that?